you. And uh, uh, before I'm saying anything, let's see a film. After the lunch, you could uh, see a little film, uh, and then I can continue. <laughs>
and about the traditional knowledge. But first I want to say some few words about my school. I'm coming from uh, Finland, Finnish Sami area, Sami Education Institute. Uh, it's a vocational school. We are not university. We are we are giving education for the ranger herders, for the Sami handicrafts, for the nursing, for the business and the tourism and the language and culture, of course. Then we have a very um, uh, important role of the develop uh, new methods, for example, to make the the handicrafts uh, make them more efficient, make them more profitable to the people. And then we are, our school is doing a very um, uh, large uh, international cooperation. We are working horizontally with other indigenous, Arctic, uh, indigenous groups uh, in the North uh, Russia, in, in Alaska and in Canada. Uh, the, the, our uh, international cooperation is very important for, um, for, uh, for us Sami people because we are so quite a small group of people in Finland. We are only 9,000 and in the, all four countries where we are living in Sweden, Norway, and Russia and Finland, we are totally 100,000. So even to my students in our school, the, the reindeer herders, uh, sons and daughters, it's very important to show them that the rain, they, they are really herding reindeer in, in all over the Arctic and it's very important and they are there seriously uh, living with the reindeer and it's very important to show our handicraft makers that people in, in, in for example, in Tiger Peninsula, they, they are making the same kind of shoes from the reindeer skin and they and the women are very much uh, in that family, so they are uh, comparing how, how we are making the Sami shoes and how they are making the, the uh, uh, Nenets or Dolkan shoes. Uh, so that uh, it's not, we are not curious, we are not at our uh, little minority, we are in the middle of the world, in our Arctic world. We are not uh, only a little uh, sentences in this kind of papers. It's real world, it's real life, it's real thing we are doing. And uh, so it is very, very important to our young Sami people for the identity, for, for the existence of the, the livelihood. Because uh, it, it, they, lots of people are saying that radio herding is not so profitable anymore and it's, uh, it's disappearing. Just change, do something else. Uh, and uh, when we have been listening today all these um, um, global warming uh, mm -hmm. uh, presentations, uh, you can easily think that, well, the people just move away from there and then, then they can live in peace. But um, it's not so. I'm, I'm going to talk about the reindeer and the children and the know-how. And the reindeer first. We, we have been, we Sami people, we have been living with the reindeer more than 5,000 years. In uh, Alta in Norway, they have a stone carvings where they, they, there is a Sami man and the reindeer. <laughs> so we have been uh, going hand in hand with the reindeer so many years. The reindeer has given us um, the, the warmth, the, the food, the transport, the housing, everything. And why the reindeer is so important? It is because the reindeer is a very unique animal. It's, it's, it's adjusted to that climate up here in the north. It, it is so unique that um, it, it has survived all these years. It is unique in the, in the body system. You know that the reindeer is changing twice a year the system, how it's uh, uh, drinking and uh, eating. So in the summertime, reindeer is eating everything green and grass and leaves and drinking lots of water and getting bigger and bigger. And when the winter is coming, then the reindeer is 
changing totally the system. It doesn't need any more water. It's not, um, it is minimizing the water level. So there is ice and no snow, there is no water. So it is one thing and the other thing that it's eating lichen which is under the snow. It doesn't need so much. Um, uh, food. So it's surviving the winter and then when the summer is coming then it's changing again. It's wanting to drink the water and, and that's the circle which is going with the reindeer. And that's why the Sami and all other reindeer herding people are surviving the Arctic region. Now what about the children then? Uh, the children, as you saw, in the tundra there are lots of children in those families. There, there are many, many, many children and they are the future of this area. And uh, it is very essential now how we are, what is happening to these children, the children of Sami people, the children of all these uh, uh, people in the north. Uh, and um, my opinion is that, that when the ranger herders, we for example, some people who have been living here so many years, we, we are getting the know-how from the, and the expertise of the ice and snow and the radio uh, from the beginning of our life. Um, uh, uh, as the rector of the radio herding school, I can say that it's very difficult to, to teach the know-how of of radio herding in the classroom, or it's very difficult to to have it in the academic environment, or it's very difficult to read it from the books. You have to go there. You have to grow with the radio. You need to feel it. You need to taste it. You need to struggle with it. You need to uh, enjoy it, and uh, then when you know how to go uh, to the radio and in in the arctic environment. Not only coal, but only how do you get the livelihood, how do you get the money you need now, and there's more money and food. And when you have the knowledge, you are able to love the way of living, and then you want to stay there and raise your family there, and then you want to pass the knowledge of ice and snow to the next generation to live with the reindeer and the Arctic. And this kind of circle we need. And uh, this kind of circle has the uh, has uh, given us to uh, the opportunity to stay there for many thousands of years. In this film we were visiting North Russia, the River Yenisei in Tiber Peninsula. Uh, like in many other places in North Russia, the radio herders are living with their radios and families in the tundra, and children are with them in, until seven years. And uh, there, as well as in the Sakmi, in the Samiland, we have noticed that it's important to the community in order to continue the culture, uh, the culture-based livelihood, that the children are not sent to the boarding schools uh, in age of seven. That they could stay there and they could... Uh,